Hello lovelies! I have acquired the necessary linen to start on my Artemisia Gentileschi project. So I'm finally starting this big project I've been thinking about for several months. So what is the first step for such a large project? Well, the first step is always tea. And then some more research procrastination. For most of human history, the almost universal undergarment for men and women was a sort of smock, usually made out of undyed linen. The details and shape and decoration vary throughout the centuries, of course. For this early 17th century look inspired by Artemisia's self-portrait paintings, the garment is simple and dramatic. Instead of having a more fitted torso and sleeves like a medieval shift with a gourd skirt to add volume, it has all of the volume pleated up into the top, or basically two rectangular front and back panels. The sleeves also have a very dramatic amount of volume. Since it has so few parts, I'm actually very anxious about getting everything precisely right. So I used a tutorial from Festive Attire that I'll link below that just helped me get all the proportions correct. As any of my former art teachers will tell you, I struggle with cutting a straight line. It will usually wibble or slant slightly, so to get a really straight edge, I used a technique I've seen other costumers use. You start at the edge of your fabric and draw a single thread from within the weave. This will give you a path down the length you need to cut so you know you're staying straight, more or less. This linen was very tightly woven and the individual fibers would start to get a little fluffy as I worked them through the rest of the fabric and they tended to break. So instead of just being able to pull it out, I had to use a pin to keep lifting and drawing the thread. In some fabrics, it's apparently much easier to tug out, but I had to be a little bit more delicate with this tight white linen. After hunching over fabric for several hours, it seemed like the ideal time to go out, get fresh air, exercise, and improve my posture. So enjoy some gratuitous slow-mo water features from my little trip. This footage, thankfully, shot by my husband. And then it was time to cut my four sleeve gores and the sleeves themselves. I did even more thread pulling because why not? I first pinned in the gores and then made pin marks down the side of the fabric just to give myself my seam allowance and again a straight line. And then I stitched it all up with a running back stitch, one of my favorite stitches for its sturdiness and speed. It was at this point I laid it out because I was tired of looking at white fabric on a white table, and I realized I made two errors. According to Festive Attire's tutorial, I wasn't supposed to stitch the sides up yet. That comes later, and I also realized as I laid out the sleeves, I placed the gores up a bit too high. I was supposed to drop them down about two inches lower. But mistakes are how we learn, so I always include mine. If I can muddle my way through this, all of you surely can, and probably will be able to follow written instructions better than I did. After some time with my faithful companion, the Seam Ripper, I placed the gores where they were supposed to be and decided it was time to start attaching the sleeves. 
I didn't bother unpicking all of my seams from the sides because while I did it out of order, that wasn't such an error, it wouldn't affect the actual construction of the garment that much. I think it's just meant to help you visualize everything correctly, which I had already failed at, so. In this design, basically the sleeves create their own shoulder when it's sewn into the band and gathered down. So it creates a sort of square-ish neck opening and it kept warping my brain because I couldn't believe it was that simple. That this basically was just two rectangles and two sleeves with gorse. But as I worked on it, I started to be able to visualize how it was coming together. This pointless try on just shows how much fabric I had to gather down. But I had fun, so. I started marking the top edges of my chemise. I made two rows of symmetrically matched quarter inch running stitches down these panels so to make sure that they all ended up approximately where they were supposed to be i went through and marked this out both the height of where they would end up and the distance so i marked every half inch and made two stitches per half inch i do the same thing for the sleeves but i actually make those stitches a little bit closer together because i was gathering down quite a lot of fabric because I have very shallow shoulders. I mean, they're only in it for the money. So I had to reduce the fabric down quite a lot. A gathering stitch, you may notice here, is just basically a running stitch. And you wanna do it with strong thread, so as you pull on it, it won't snap. If your gathering thread snaps, it's not a good day. Once both rows are in, you can start gathering it down by tugging the fabric down to the width you want it to end up as. And at the end, you will sort of tie off and back stitch down those extra threads and cut them.
I cut some strips from my leftover linen, uh, about two inches wide, I think was my measurement, so that I could bind it along the top edges of the front, back, and shoulders. So I could have done a pulled thread for this, but I didn't. I trusted in my acrylic ruler instead, and it worked out pretty even. Before attaching your binding, make sure to stroke your gathers. Uh, no, no, not like that. Yes, like that with a pin. You just arrange them evenly to distribute them in an aesthetically pleasing way before you make them permanently situated by attaching the binding. I then stitched down this binding around all the edges and had a try on. Even though I use slightly less fabric than the tutorial actually, it's a little big, but in some ways it's also very lovely. The subtle elegance of all those tiny gathers stitched into that flat band really tickles my fancy. It's just not a feature you see often in modern clothing. And then I decided it looked too plain, so I styled myself with some fake foliage, like a queen of the forest. Why not? It's my video. <laughs> I decided to try it on with my everyday stays from a few videos ago, just because this was going to be worn under a structured bodice, and I wanted to see if that made it feel a little bit less likely to cause a wardrobe malfunction, just because the opening is so huge. And it did, it helped a lot. But I started thinking that perhaps if I just fold down that shoulder edge there, where the front turns into the sleeve, it would probably solve a lot of my problems. So I decided to pin it down and give it a try. It's possible that I just didn't gather it down enough. It's also possible that at the time, they may have been pinned to the bodice. A lot of things were pinned historically. I also decided that at some point I may want to add some buttons or some ribbon ties to the sleeves because it's really hard, you know, to truss them up if you're trying to kill a man. Um, and if I wear it to a festival or event, I don't want to have to be keeping track of my sleeves all day. Though her heroines don't seem to have any means of support for their sleeves, I may just want that for a touch of practicality. And then I decided to see if that would improve the structure even without some sort of bodice. And it really did. It helped give it more of that squared off neck look and kept it on my shoulders a little better. So I'll just pop a few stitches in there. Problem solved. I call this one a success. I'll give you a little gratuitous cat footage as I do my outro. I just wanted to let you know that I have started a little bit of merch. Uh, a friend of mine did a beautiful design for me and I've put it on a t-shirt, which you'll find linked below that you can purchase. I love making free content for you guys, but sometimes it is a little bit hard to afford the materials I need, particularly for this project. Um, so I just thought that might be a fun way to do a little bit of fundraising and that you might enjoy the merch as well. So if you want to have a look, I really appreciate it. And I will be back with another video soon, something a stash buster, not the next part of this, unfortunately. 
I post about three videos a month here on YouTube and I post several times a week on Instagram, which you'll also find linked below. So if you want to see what I get up to next, please subscribe or follow me. Bye.